The integrator is one of the most useful op-amp based circuits, as the ability to integrate analog signals without the use of any computer is quite incredible. Be as that may, the ideal integrator is actually of no use. Can you think why? This may come as a shock to you, however we're not able to integrate signals practically, using this integrator as it is. There are certain modifications we need to make to this circuit, so that we get proper integrating action. Let's switch off our input VN. In this case, as there is no input, we expect a zero output. In fact, that is exactly what we get. But what happens if we now implement this integrator using a practical op amp? A practical op amp, as we saw in an earlier video, has input offset voltages. Hence, along with VN we have VOS in series. Now, if we switch off VN, we are left with VOS. A certain current is generated due to VOS through the resistor. This current has nowhere to go but through the capacitor. Hence, using the equation for the ideal integrator, V out as a function of time is equal to minus 1 by RC into the integral of VOS from time 0 to T. Note that the input offset voltage is a DC quantity. Hence, this constant DC voltage gets integrated which results into the output tending to plus infinity or minus infinity. As V out approaches the positive or negative saturation voltage, the output saturates. After this point, the op amp no longer acts as an integrator. This can also be seen from the frequency response of the circuit. We know that V out by V in is 1 upon J omega RC. As the input offset voltage is a DC quantity, omega is equal to 0 and hence, we get infinite gain and the output saturates. This problem of offsets is quite serious in integrators as the op amp output saturates almost instantly, even if we have no input, rendering the circuit useless. To solve this problem, we make slight modifications in our circuit. This time let's consider input offset voltage referred to the non-inverting terminal. To fix the issues encountered in an ideal op amp, we add a resistor RF, in parallel to the capacitor C. Let's switch off our input for now. This will give us an idea of how the circuit behaves with just VOS present. VOS has a constant DC value. The capacitor hence acts like an open circuit as it presents high impedance to low frequencies. This VOS generates some current through the resistor R. However, unlike the case of the ideal integrator, the current now has a pathway to move other than the capacitor. Hence, the current flows through RF and the circuit reduces to the non-inverting amplifier. Hence, V out due to VOS is simply 1 plus RF upon R into VOS. For example, if VOS is equal to 1 mV and RF upon R is equal to 100, then V out contains a DC error of 101 mV. However, at least the integrating action on VOS is avoided and the output remains away from saturation. How does this resistor or F affect the integrating function? Turning off VOS now, we use the Laplace domain analysis to find out. RF and 1 by SC appear in parallel, as the feedback impedance. Hence, V out by V in is equal to, minus RF parallel 1 by SC upon R. A little simplification gives us minus RF upon R, into 1 by 1 plus SRFC. Thus, the circuit now contains a pole at minus 1 by RFC, rather than at the origin. The frequency domain plot looks like this, in which the corner angular frequency is at 1 by RFC. That is, the integration function holds for input frequencies much higher than 1 by RFC. Thus, RF by R must be sufficiently small so as to minimize the amplified offset. Whereas, RFC must be sufficiently large so as to negligibly impact the signal frequencies of interest. And that's how we fix our integrator. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.